This is Agronomy Moment. I'm Wendell Cohen. All right, welcome back to Agronomy Moment. Today I have Chase Scott with Risk Solutions, our crop insurance agent. Welcome here. Wendell, sure appreciate you having me uh, be here. I'm always um, humbled uh, when I'm asked to be on here. I kind of see the value that you provide and drive for your customers. So anytime I get a chance to, to come, I always jump on it. Thank you. I've uh, learned a lot from you too as well over the years as we've talked and brainstormed together. You and- bet. What I want, would like today is hope to uh, share, have you share with us about crop insurance and the things that you've helped us with. Um, if you would share with our listeners, we're going to jump over into our uh, um, slide here, our PowerPoint I've put together, and some mm-hmm. questions I have. Mm-hmm. I want you to go over that with me if you would. You bet. So crop insurance updates, just talking again, some of the stuff is same old, same old every year, but we kind of forget, right? I'm a farmer and I tend to forget how that all works for sure. Mm-hmm. There's some rules to be aware of. And so we're going to talk a little bit first of the changes, the things that are different. Sure. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about some government programs uh, that we need to be aware of to sign up for. And I thought for something fun and different, we'll visualize a farmer okay. um, putting together his deal. Um we have a Texas farmer, right, coming on board, and he's unsure of how corn and soybean farming is done here in Missouri. Um, he put together houses in Texas, and since we're farming on paper, we can make this story, this farmer, whatever we want. You may have heard of Chip Gaines, so okay. <laughs> we're going to be dealing right. with some celebrities today. I hope you're not too nervous with that type there of a situation. Go. And um, finally, we'll wrap up with asking you about some products to add. I said RNA on the slide, but is that even correct? That's not correct. Um, no, that's that's fine. I would just call them, you know, they're just uh, private products that are non-federally subsidized. So, okay. um, you know, RMA is the governing body of crop insurance. These okay. would be private products that are offered through, you know, our carrier. Okay. Without government subsidy. Perfect. Mm-hmm. All right. We ready to jump in. Before before I actually do, I want you, everyone pay attention to the fine print. Uh, everything we say here is what has worked and has had historical significance, and you can use it as tools on your farm. However, please be advised that you need a personal advisor to uh, figure out your unique situation and farm. So with that, let's dive right in. Um, changes for 23, help us out. So it's interesting generally we see anymore in the crop insurance program, you know, incremental changes. It's not like we're seeing wide sweeping, you know, changes from year to year that, that change how a farmer, um, you know, does their risk management or or how they handle their operation. Um, Everything I'm seeing this year, I would say would be good changes, uh, good for the farmer. And it seems to me like the way the wind has been blowing the last, you know, really five, 10 years, everything has always been focused more on being a little more farmer friendly. Sure. Um, and I guess that brings me to the first point that we have this year. Um, they've made planning date changes for most of our area. And when I say that, I say Southwest Missouri, South Central Missouri, or West Central Missouri, Southeast Kansas. Um, they've really helped us on broadening that planning date um, time frame. So we now have an initial plant date for soybeans of April 15th. Okay. You know, and that moved another five days earlier than April 20th for most of our, sure. for most of our region. So I'm sure you're seeing it just like we are. A lot of guys are getting into the field earlier, yep. um, kind of pushing that, you know, weather yes. a little bit or that early date a little bit. And, um, you know, I believe they're seeing some success with that. So um, RMA has kind of um, helped out with that on that front. And then, on the other side of that, they've also uh, made some changes on our final plant dates, which I think are a really good deal. Um, so for our area, for first crop beans, okay. most of our area is going to have a June 25th final plant date. Okay. So, and to explain that, that doesn't mean that you have to plant by June 25th. Okay. What that means is if you plant by June 25th, you get your full guarantee. Yeah. If we plant after that, they take a percentage off of your guarantee 
for 25 days. And what was that last year? Do you, or is that, that's a change, right? No, we've always had that late planting period. Okay. So that, that is something that has been June 25. Yes. We've, yeah. um, what they did was they made that kind of broader for our, for our area. Uh, I see. So, sure. but for example, let's say you plant June 28th, you know, yeah. you're still going to get coverage. Um, you just would have 3% off of your guarantee. So Makes sense. one, one thing that we as, you know, agents, um, suggest is try to get everything initially planted by June 25th. Yep. Doesn't have anything to do with replant or anything like that. But if you can get all your fields for first crops planted by June 25th, sure. You're covered under that deadline. Um, and then one of probably the more significant changes that I feel for this year was that they split first crop and double crop beans. Perfect. those planting dates yes. so you kind of know how uh, southwest missouri is weather dictates yeah. a lot of when we're in the field at the end of the summer right. and we've really seen farmers fight it when we get a rain at the end of june early july and they can't get their beans get their double crops planted back so sure. um uh rma has allowed us to extend that to two july 5th and that took us you know from that june 25th mark um yes. prior out to out to that Help. So, I was curious right off. Um, what if I went out to the field on April the 10th and planted soybeans? Mm -hmm. What happens then? I just don't get replant. So, and I'm glad you bring that up because two things under your no normal multi curl policy, you would have full coverage. You just would not get replant. Okay. So if you planted April 10th and you had to replant yes. under your normal multi curl re replant or under your normal, normal multi curl policy, you wouldn't have replant, sure. but I can show you later on. We actually have some private products where if you really want to get in there super early, yes. excuse me, if you want to get in there super early, we can get you paid under a private product that will allow yes. a guy to get into the field up to 20 days sooner. And then that choice needs to be made by March 15th. So that's a March 15th okay. choice. Yeah. We'll talk if we can talk about that more later as we cover that written agreement, talk a little bit about the Milo. What, what are we, what are your, thoughts there on talking about this. So that's really interesting. And I, in the past, I've always hoped one of our customers would try some double crop Milo. Okay. But in our area, it was uninsurable because the only thing that was insurable, mainly double crop was beans, you sure. know, following a sure. wheat crop. Um, I've always felt like our plant dates, if we could execute correctly, we could still raise a good yes. Milo crop if we could get it in timely and, um, you know, get the plant started up and healthy. So, just this year for 2023 and forward, they have allowed for us to write in through a written agreement and say, you know what, Wendell wants to plant some uh, Milo after wheat. Sure. And we can, uh, you know, show the fields um, and then um, we'll put that in this written agreement, submit it to RMA, and then they will come back with an offer that is generally a percentage of the normal county average for Milo. I see. So, okay. Um, normally, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be less than the county average, but think, you know, 80% of the county average. And, and just so I'm clear is that would translate over to like Kansas and it's not specific to one region necessarily. No, like it's it, in our area. I'm yeah, I actually about. have, um, some literature if anybody is interested in the uh, region that that would cover, but it's going to cover uh, a good portion of, um, Kansas and Missouri. Okay. Well, I can, we can always, if you give me that slide, we'll put, pop it in and do a picture in picture and shoot it up there for everyone to see real quick. Ab absolutely. Just looking at, at the slide we've got here, it's going to cover, it's going to cover a main portion of our area. Gotcha. Yeah. Sounds good. Moving on to government programs, especially the farm bill, I think it was, had the disaster relief signups that we can do. Uh, what's going on with that? So, you know, we've got until you, you as a farmer have until March 15th to go into the, your county FSA office and, um, you know, make a designation between the ARC or the PLC program. Okay. Um, so our county is basically a county revenue based program that a farmer would choose. And if our county revenue, not based off of anything that you do on your own farm, sure. but if we have a, our county revenue drop below a certain point, Yes. Um, which would be 86%. We're going to start seeing some payments there 
um, based on that. And that's based upon the county's yield and the, and the average price of something? We have an expected yield, expected price. Gotcha. They go through the year, harvest yield, harvest price to determine what percentage of that county revenue actually sure. you know, occurred versus their expectations. Gotcha. So, and do you have any idea? Has any data came out yet talking about 22, whether Vernon County or Barton County? I don't believe that is out yet. Yeah. Um, you, I would suggest going in and, and asking um, at the FSA office to see when that is or if it is actually sure. out, but I don't, I don't think that is out for 22 just yet. I'm usually, sure. usually from when we deal with county based programs and the crop insurance program, a lot of times those numbers come out. May through June of the next year. Gotcha. So, so 23 of this year before you find out 22. You bet. Talk about PLC and then if you would kind of wrap it up with a neat little bow of exactly which one we're supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess that's I'll, possible. I guess I'll refer to that disclaimer that <laughs> okay. Wendell, you know, said at the beginning, but or that you said at the beginning. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to give you guys, uh, going to give some prices here. Okay. And um, these are prices where commodities on the board would have to be below a certain price during the year bef before we even think about collecting on anything. And would this have to average that price or it just has to hit? I think we're going to have to touch below that for a certain time, but okay. I believe the longer it is below, like for example, corn 370. Yes. The longer it is below 370 for corn, the uh, more significant of a payment. Um, or, or the deeper, you know, how how much further that is below, you know, the payment would be more significant. Sure, makes sense. So for these reference prices, we've got corn at three seventy, soybeans at eight forty, wheat at five fifty, yep, and milo at three ninety five. And the one point that we've you know been making is we've got pretty good co commodity prices right now, and we are going to have to see, for example, soybeans. You know, we're 1372 on the board, you know, last I checked or somewhere, somewhere right around there. We're going to have to drop below um, 840 for that, um, for that to kick in a payment. And that's going to be like a, I'm just right off the top of my head, it looks like a 40% drop in price or something of that nature. Yes. I mean, just from a, just from a producer standpoint, not me speaking to you as a, as a yeah. crop insurance agent, but those all of those commodity prices seem fairly low given the environment that we're in now. I agree. So when I think just from a farmer standpoint, I'm thinking, okay, at least we have a chance with our county, you know, based off of our own county yield, expected, you know, expected price, yes. expected revenue. Um, so I would tend to lean towards our county. Sure. One thing I would say is for guys who have bottom ground. Okay. There is a program called ARC Individual, and um, okay. when these bottoms flood out, yep. you know, the ARC Individual program can be a good thing for the farmer. Um, I believe you are reporting individual yields on a certain farm number for ARC Individual, but okay. when we have, you know, and, and we've seen it around here, when we have you know, a flood come in and totally wipe out a crop on the bottoms. Yes. That is when we, or I have heard about larger payments being made because that farmer was in park individual. Okay. So, Something to keep in mind. My suggestion would be to go in, talk to the um, men or ladies in your uh, county FSA offices. Yes. And, you know, take the, take the 30 minutes, take the hour to go over that and see what works out best for your for your farm. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for that info. You bet. Let's move on now to our farm here. We have Chip Gaines Farms, um, 182 set up. Not really sure how to set this up. I rented some ground from some, or rented some ground from some high powered celebrities. Okay. And, and on a, right on the county line, and we wanna see if we can't uh, put this together with a good plan. Um, so I guess where I'm going to start with is we have Bates County to the north and Vernon to the south and help me with Bates. First of all, how are we, how would you, this is what my intentions are. Sure. But help me understand what's talk a little bit about enterprise versus basic. First of all. Sure. So, you know, one of the two main unit structures that we sell 
as yes. crop insurance agents are enterprise and option okay. units. So, you know, we have the ability here to, in this King 40, if you'd want, you could collect on only this King 40 okay. with corn and it's in section 21. Yes. You could only collect on this Hanks 120 in section 23. These farms would operate independently of each other because they're separated by that section line right there. Okay. When a farmer chooses to have these farms operate independent of, of each other and collect independently of each other on that same crop, that is called optional units. So generally that gives you the highest chance to collect, but sure. also your premium is more expensive than other options given that, sure. you know, what happens on this farm doesn't necessarily affect what happens on this farm over in this, this section. Sure. So that is one uh, way that farmers can insure their ground. And we have uh, a lot of farmers who are in optional units given, you know, their, their needs. Yes. Another thing that we sell quite a bit of and would probably be something that I would suggest in this situation is enterprise units. Okay. So instead of collecting on this farm independently or this farm independently for corn, what we're thinking is we have an enterprise unit, which gives you a whole farm guarantee for corn in Bates County. Okay. So let's say between both farms, you know, we've got, um, 90 bushel guaranteed on mm -hmm. the King 40 and we've got a hundred and 110 bushel guaranteed on mm -hmm. Hanks 120. And between everything, we have a hundred bushel guaranteed across the farm. Okay. You know, it's going to prorate that based on your acreage, but just for simple math, let's yes. say we've got a hundred bushel guaranteed across your whole farm. Yes. When we're in enterprise, it doesn't, it will not matter what those farms do independently. It will matter what we raised across the whole farm for yes. that bushel guarantee. So how does rules work then? Like I've got this little, little field here, four acres, Goldberg four here. Mm -hmm. Um, I was thinking of doing soybeans. Mm -hmm. Um, so how does that work? Can I enterprise this whole thing up here and put it all or tell me, help me understand sure. that part. So on this little four acre field, yes. I think the decision we'd want to make is, okay, um, do you want to pay just in a basic unit on soybeans, which basically yes. means we only have one section of soybeans and that's considered a basic unit. The yes. only farm we have for soybeans. Yes. So for me as an agent, if you're, if you're, we're going through this, I'm going to say, okay, I think your options would be, okay, A, do you want to plant this to another crop and enterprise together? Yep. You know, that's an option where we can enterprise. Take this to corn. Take that to corn. Yep. Or, you know, it looks to me like a fairly small field. Um, so for four acres. Yes. My thought is, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel here by yeah. trying to enterprise it with something else if it doesn't work. You know, four acres in the big scheme of things and everything else is not going to add too much to your premium. So you very well could just have that in a basic unit, but if something comes along where you could enterprise. Well, what about, uh, can I enterprise the corn and have this in like a, what would you call it? A basic unit? Absolutely. I could do that. Yeah. And we see that all the time where, you know, corn is enterprised and yes. we just have this one field of beans and it's, it's a basic unit. And, and then, Okay. And then tell me, so, um, this, this landlord over here, Jolie, she really likes cattle, but I've been trying to get her to change this to grass to mm -hmm. something. We could do soybeans here, 16 acres. That's clear over here though, in different section 24. Does that change this story? Any? It does. It okay. does. So if we would add this 16 acres of grass, yep. we could enterprise the soybeans here and this Jolene 16 together here. Okay. So, um, gives a purse that would give you, you know, that enterprise unit discount. And, and I, I'll just say this, you know, we're always thinking about this by crop by County. Yeah. So let's say you want to, let's say you want to enterprise your beans together yes. and you want your corn to be optional units. You totally have that choice because you're choosing by crop by county. Okay. So, but yeah. Um, really the one thing I would focus on is it's always situation dependent, you know, what works best for you. Right. And we always want to keep in mind, okay, what's the fertility like on this place, you know, versus okay. the fertility over here, or what's the soil type like over here versus over here, how mm -hmm. far away are they? Yes. You know, generally in enterprise units, I'm looking for farms that are close together with same soil types, 
same fertility because I want yes. them to act in unison yes. when we collect. I would either like to, you know, obviously not have a year where we collect, but if we do collect, I don't want one farm to do really well and one do poorly and yes. knock us out of a chance to collect on our, you know, policy. Now, I just right offhand, just, just what you brought up actually brought me to a thought is what if I took the whole thing north of the line to corn, mm -hmm. everything was corn, mm -hmm. and we broke this out and we put corn in here. Mm -hmm. um, I can't enterprise these two together and these two, right? You, no. It would have to be the whole area here is enterprised, and that's where we need to make that decision on how diverse we are versus how similar. How diverse your operation is. It's going to go enterprise by that whole policy. Absolutely. You know, that's uh, that's something where if, if we're operating under John Smith Farms for all of these, yes, all of these would, would be um, one enterprise unit. Now, one thing that we've seen in the past is, let's say John Smith has a son that wants to come along. You know, sure. we're always interested in helping young farmers. We have that beginning farmer rancher discount, which gives you a premium discount. Yes. But let's say, you know, John says, you know what? I want, I want my son to farm Hank's 120, and I want my son to farm, um, let's say Jolie's 16 over here yes. is in corn. You know, um, we yeah. would need to have... 20 acres in each section. Yep. But, you know, we could break up some risk there given, you know, all of these farms if we have, you know, a farmer have his son, you know, start farming under, sure. under uh, uh, policy. So sure. something, something to think about. Gotcha. Help me understand you know, as we come south here a little bit. This Crow 30, I was going to take the soybeans, but I'm not sure what to do with Costner 35 mm -hmm. yet, mm -hmm. um, what crop to go with. But, like help me, help me understand how what kind of um, options we can have here since we're doing, we're just doing corn right here. So sure. So the one thing I really like how you laid this map out, especially in Vernon County, because you know you've given us some up ground here, okay, and we've also got some some bottom ground yes. down here. It looks like yes. So right now we'll go look and see. You know we're up here on the up ground, and my opinion to you is. Um, you know, it's not going to be a huge, uh, you know, deal breaker if you choose to plant this to a different crop and we, we land in a basic unit. Okay. You know, if we, if you are dead set on planting that to corn because yep. you need to fit the feed, you think the price is going to be better. Your, your, you know, prospects are better. You know, I think, I think that would be just fine, but you know, if you're on the fence and if you think we, the ground is about the same as far as fertility, soil type, et cetera. Yes. It sure makes sense here for us to enterprise these because we have separated our upground between Bates and Vernon County. So this is all the only the ground in Vernon County that's going to matter is Costner and Crow right there if they're yes. both in beans. Yeah. So if they're both in beans, we can enterprise those across those two section lines. You bet. And and, and you know the thought process is if it's going to rain here or not rain here, yeah, we're probably going to have this the same weather event there. Makes sense. Yeah. Now why? What's stopping me from being able just to enter? Let's just say this Goldberger and this over here. Why can't I go across? Or can I? Can I do anything with the county line there? So it's interesting. They do have um, an option called the multi-county enterprise unit. Okay. So let me give you an example. Let's say we're farming the Crow Thirty and the Costner Thirty. In yes in um, uh, Vernon County. Yes. And the only other farm we have, the only other section that we have in Bates County that's that's in beans yes. is the Jolie 16. Okay. Okay, if we only have one other uh, section, which is Jolie 16, we yes. could cross and enterprise this mm -hmm. together with the Jolie 16. And if we took Goldberg to corn, then we would qualify, am I correct? Let me see here. If we took Goldberg to corn up here on the yes. King 40. Yeah. By, uh, yes. Right by the King 40. So, this was all corn. This was beans and these two. Are yes, beans. yes. Yes. So we're, we're, we would still qualify for corn all up here and because then, you've qualified for enterprise between these three fields. And then, then I'm just going back to this here. If this was soybeans, would mm -hmm. it qualify to go across the county? It would. Because we have just one farm. We, we would be able to qualify for that multi-county enterprise unit. The one thing I will say Okay. is, you know, that kind of, that makes sense when we are right awesome. here, this yes. close on county lines. Yeah. I would not want you to have a farm in Northern Bates County. And then let's say 
yes. you know, the southern part of Vernon County or far away. Yes. Because, boy, we start getting some weather risk in there. We start seeing some risks on different soil types. Absolutely. You know, a lot of things play into uh, account there that I wouldn't, you know, I just start seeing a risk ramp up the further away we get from from these farms. Cool. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Now, um, so now let's see, we're soybeans, soybeans. Let's say we go soybeans on Costner. Is this, this is high risk. Like you talked just a little bit about already. Mm -hmm. Does this all get enterprise together then? No, that's one thing that came out, um, several years ago that really helped the farmer in the bottoms. Okay. Was, and, and, you know, if you, are not separating your bottom ground out currently yes. and it's all being enterprised together. Yes. That is some low hanging fruit that your agent can really help you out with because yes. we have the ability to separate out these, these uh, pieces of bottom ground yes. into their own separate policy. Separate from here. Separate from, from the upground. Ground. Separate from the okay. upground. The okay. only thing that you are required to get them to qualify is they need to be in the same crop down here. So we've got beans here. We've yes, got beans yeah. here. Yes. The rule is, is you need to be at least one level lower than your upgrade policy. Uh, so if you were a 70, you need to be a 65. Yeah. If you're at 70, you need to be 65 in the bottoms, or you could be level 70 in yield protection in the bottoms, which does not give you the revenue protection like all these policies yes. generally have. Yes. You know, yield protection is just going to give you yes. a projected price and that's it. Yes. Um, from our experience, yep. we've seen revenue in the fall or harvest price in the fall really help a farmer on their guarantee. And um, it's, we really recommend a revenue protection policy. Makes sense. Yeah. Very good. Thanks for helping out. Um, I guess, where do I sign? <laughs> that's, that's right. Sign, <laughs> sign me up. So, but anyway, my, my, goal here was, and I think you've done a very great job here of explaining it, is sometimes we know the rules, but when you get it down to your farm and you see these individual situations, yeah. I was hoping to help do exactly what you did, is it kind of lay it out and explain it and say, hey, well, you could do this, and you, yeah. you, if you change this crop over here, that changes this. Yeah. There's things to think about as you're moving forward with your operation. It's not just a simple, hey, I'm just going to be enterprise, or I'm just going to be all basic. Or, My opinion is, is when you can grab that enterprise unit discount and it makes sense, go ahead and grab it. Sure. You know, okay. um, and for the scenario we've been given here, you know, it, you never say never, but it sure looks to me like with how close these are, yes. enterprise would be a good option for, for the farmer. Especially if we can make a few changes to what crop we're going to do you here bet. and all that. We can make that work really well right. from that perspective. You bet. Sounds good. Let's talk about additional products now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just go right on through that. You know, you touched on that earlier, asking about, um, you know, replanting earlier than that yes. April 15th date. And that kind of just, uh, you know, brought to mind one product that we sell a lot of, and I know you guys have had it in the past yes. on your farm. Um, it's replant extra. So in your multi peril policy right now, which is, you know, yes. the meat and potatoes of what most farmers have, yep. um, replant is built in. Okay. So roughly that's going to pay you $41 for soybeans, $48 for corn. Okay. Um, and you don't have to pay anything extra for that. It's just part of the premium that you, that you, you know, pay when yes. you sign up for insurance. Yes. You know, I, I would recommend to the guys who didn't know they have that, you know, uh, reach out to your agent and, and let them know when you have to replant because that's yes. just, you know, some free money there. When you do have to replant, go ahead and turn it in and, and get paid, you know, for, for the work you've put in. And I can just let you know about that and harvest time, right? <laughs> I wish. I wish. Um, generally, if you have to replant, okay. give me a call and let me know before you've destroyed that okay. stand. Yes. Um, if you think you have a replant you, situation coming, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. And it's just as simple as give me a shout. I turn a replant claim in and you're going to be contacted yes. very soon on somebody putting eyes, you know, on yes. that crop. So generally in our experience, the adjusters are not stopping you from getting into the field. It's, right. it's, they're very fast about, uh, being on the ball and getting you, you know, yes. getting you, uh, paid and getting you back, back where you need to be. But, um, replant extra. Okay. Yes. Talk about that. Replant extra pays on top of that $41 for soybeans yeah. and 48 I mentioned earlier. Um, so that adjuster that comes out and does your regular replant 
adjustment, he was already, it's already a qualification automatically that you'll get the extra. As long as we are on talking about upland ground. Yes, you know, upland, we, correct. We, as, as long as we're on upland ground, you can sign up for $60 extra on corn and up to $50 extra okay. on beans. So yeah. just in that example, you know, if you want to, you could uh, have, you know, 60 and 48, yes. $108 worth of replant should you have to replant. And really those rates are fairly reasonable. Yes. Um, we're talking um, just a few dollars an acre. It's nothing, it's nothing, uh, yeah. you know, outrageous. But the reason that we sell so much of this is because we have seen, you know, the value that it brings back to the farmer, especially being Southwest Missouri, yes. Southeast Kansas, where, you know, it seems like, man, you get, you get into April and, and it's not a, a, a quarter inch rain. It seems yes. like we'll get, you know, these two to three inch rains that yeah. really can right. kind of hurt, hurt our progress here. It makes sense. Talk just briefly back to that first slide. We were or one of those slides, we were talking a little bit about planting early. What do you call that product when you want to go out there earlier than yeah. the April 15th for beans or? So that is part of replant extra is. Oh, it's included. It's included in replant extra is you oh. can get an extra 20 days before that April 15th. So, gotcha. so you're in into March actually for beans. You're end of March for, for beans. And then for corn, it will allow you to go, uh, uh, from April 1st, allow you, you to go, um, 15 days back. So March 15th, March 15th. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I did not catch so, what you had said there. Now, if, if that's the case and we, let's say we plant, um, let's say we plant March 18th on corn. Sure. We're only getting paid on our replant extra portion of that because our multi peril has not kicked in. Gotcha. So, um, but it does give that farmer the option to have that amount of coverage that, Hey, yes. it's going to be all right. I think it's time to go. And I can, you know, I can collect here if, if things go wrong for me. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for so, clarifying that. Continue with, uh, what are you talking about? Revenue price option. So revenue price option is, um, just another way that we can add some, uh, dollars worth of guarantee onto your multi peril policy. Okay. So just for example, I believe we came in right at that 592 mark for corn. Okay. And, um, you know, let, I'm just going to just give you a, an easy example here. Let's say we're guaranteed a hundred bushel. Yep. $5 and 92 cents times a hundred is $592. Yes. This private product allows, for example, for corn, we can mm -hmm. add at least 25 cents onto that mm -hmm. and a maximum of a dollar onto that, um, to add to your potential loss. Should we, you know, should we experience a, a tough year? Just so I'm clear on that, a dollar added to 592 up to that 692. 692. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Yep. And and the way that they would come up with that potential extra dollar. So the floor is in there, the 25 cents we could, we would have that. Yes. But to get to that potential cap, they have added um, some alternative marketing periods. And that would be the month of May, the month of June or the month of July. And okay. so let's say, we selected, you can select all or one or all of those marketing periods. And, yes. um, let's say we selected the month of July. Okay. Um, and in the month of July, we went crazy on the board. We're going to have, you know, a drought and yes. corn goes to, uh, 692. Yes. We are right at that dollar cap. Yes. And we would get for our guarantee, we would get $6 and 92 cents instead of the the 592. 592 plus the 25 cents that was on the floor on that. Oh, yeah, sure. So, but it's just a okay. way for if a farmer is looking for extra coverage yes. and determines that price is a risk for them, yeah. this is a way to kind of mitigate that. Gotcha. So, is what's revenue plus then? So, revenue plus is another um, uh, private product um, that is going to be based on a percentage of your loss. So okay. if the first one we're talking about adding price, yes, you know, we're talking about just adding dollars to our guarantee yep. here. We're talking about a percentage of loss. So again, okay. I'm trying to make this easy for everybody, but on revenue plus, let's say we have, um, let's say we have a uh, hundred bushels guaranteed or a hundred dollar. Let's say we have a hundred dollar loss on our multi peril okay. policy revenue. Plus you can add up to 25% of that loss. So on our multi peril policy, you know, on this field, we had a hundred dollars. Okay. Revenue 
plus says, hey, he signed up for this. We're going to give him an extra 25% of what that loss was. Okay. So then your loss goes from 100 to $125. Okay. On what that's being paid back. On what is being yes. paid back. It's just, you know, think of a percent extra of loss that is being paid. Sure. So. Makes sense. Talk about the county. What are What's the county-based programs? Sure. Um, I don't understand numbers when they're going 95% to 86%. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, go for it. So it's, it's the offerings that we've had come out for um, crop insurance. It seems like, you know, they get wider and more variable as, yep. as the program matures. But one thing that came out several years ago was this enhanced coverage option and supplemental coverage option. Okay. And so the one thing I would say on both of these is it has nothing to do with the production on your farm. It is going to base be based on what the county does, you know, in your area for that crop. Sure. And so if, for example, for ECO, if we drop below 95% of the county average, we are going to see a payment from that, you know, that level from 95 to 86%. It's kind of a kind of a thin level here yeah. where if you chose to have ECO, you know, you could have a, do a certain dollar payment. Let's say if, if the county average dropped to, you know, 85%, we have, we have taken up all of that band and we would qualify for all of that payment through ECO. And you're saying if the county drops below 95% of what its historical average yep, is. It's, it's kind of like we were talking about on our county. We're going to yes. have a, a projected, Yes. County yield, projected county price, yes. Um, harvested county yield, you know, um, finalized price, yep. and then it's going to, um, you know, figure based on you know your specific APH for that certain unit. So, sure. but um, so and ECO and SCO are pretty similar. What we really see is the band difference. You know, ECO goes from ninety five to eighty six. Yes. And then SCO is going to pick up from that 86% oh, okay. sure. mark down below. Yes. So let's say you're in level 70, multi yep. Yep. You know, it's going to pick you up from 86 down to level 70, you know? Okay. So sure. if, for example, let's say the county, the year is really terrible in um, Vernon County. And we have, let's say we have, you know, 65% of normal county yield. We would be hitting both of those bands, payments in both of those bands as we come down. And then the thought is, is your multi peril policy is going to pick up, you know, where where these ECO and SCO left off. Interesting. Yeah. So if you is are those two options, ECO is one option you can choose versus SCO. It's not like you're in one until it falls below. You choose one or the other. They're independent of each other. Yes. They carry their own premium. The one thing I will say about SCO is they do not allow you to have two county-based programs at once. So if you're okay. in our county, okay. which we were mentioning earlier, yep. you cannot have SCO because they're, you know, they're basically saying, you know, you're double dipping yes. here. Yep. Yep. So, but that's, you know, that's something to look at. And again, it all comes back to where do you see your risk? You know, yep. in my opinion, excuse me, in my opinion on these county-based programs, you know, this is a pretty good thing for, a guy who's a pretty progressive farmer and he thinks, you know, he can raise a crop on his own ground and then yes. maybe the county does poorly and he could potentially collect there, you know. So sure. if he thinks he can generally beat the county average or, or you know, do sure. well on his own farm, then, you know, that county comes in and he still has a potential to collect on something that was kind of, you know, outside of any control of his. And this ECO, for example, or the SEO, though, they are additional products to your current revenue protection product. Yes, they are. They are federally subsidized, okay. so they're not. They're you know they carry some subsidy with them, but um, it's just in our area, you know, Southwest Missouri, Southeast Kansas. It's not like we're in Iowa or Minnesota where premiums yes. are very cheap. Yes, um, we generally are in a higher premium area, and the yeah. one thing that I always stress to guys is, yeah. man. Let's fill your needs, but I don't want to, I don't want to charge it, you know, out the nose on premium. Sure. Okay. So, you know, if a farmer kind of has an idea of what they want to spend or what they want to cover, yep. any more, we can get you there. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for explaining that. It makes sense. You bet. Um, some more options on the table to enhance your farm and protect your, your livelihood. So anything else before we close down, Chase? You know, I... I would just say now is the time of year if, 
you know, um, you you want to be having those conversations with your crop insurance agent. Yes. Um, if you don't have that type of relationship, or you feel like um, you know you need to uh, uh, be looking for somebody else, obviously we'd um, love to love to uh, you know meet up with you. We're we're located in uh, Nevada, Missouri, but we we work all over Southeast Kansas, uh, Southwest Missouri, um, uh, South Central Missouri, actually all into Missouri, and then yeah. some down in Arkansas. So. So would you help Chip down in Texas? Or? You know, I, I, I would say I would say Chip probably left a pretty good thing at, at Magnolia, Magnolia. But if okay. he wants to come up here and farm, we yes. sure help him. Absolutely, and and for sure, uh, if you are unsatisfied or looking for an agent, I can't say enough good things about Risk Solutions. And so, thanks, Chase. I have your number and email up on the screen. Take a picture of it, screenshot it, and give him a shout. Thank you. And Wendell, like I said, I, I'm just always amazed at, you know, I come back here and, and you're growing and, and uh, doing more. And um, it's always just an honor to be here. And I'm uh, glad to be associated with you. So thank you for having me. And, and um, I hope we, uh, we did some good for, for some farmers out there today. Thank you. Thank you for joining. I know we did. I know you did. Um, you've put out a lot of good info here. And I think it will be very helpful going sure. forward. If you have questions relating to our show or something offended you, or if you just want to come on here and talk about it, <laughs> I have my phone number as well in the email. So with that, thank you and see you next time. Take care. Everyone, thank you for joining us today on Agronomy Moment, a Top Ag Services production. If you want alerts on what we are finding in the field, go to topagservices.com forward slash signups to receive alerts or subscribe to our YouTube channel. This is our goal to bring you the most recent and advanced information possible. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to reach out to us anytime. We also ask you that you give us a like and follow our channel wherever you listen to your podcasts or watch these videos. This ultimately helps us reach more people like you. Hey, this has been Wendell Cohen, your show host. Thank you to all who made this show possible. This show is over. See ya.